Hi everyone, today's video is on buoyancy and displacement. Before we learn about buoyancy, we have to know what displacement is. Displacement. Displacement helps us calculate the volume of irregular shapes. For example, we can calculate the volume of this cube easily with its dimensions. Volume equals length times width times height. But what about an irregular shape? Like this key. There are no volume for formulas for this. So what can we do? This is where we use displacement. If we take this key and place it into the graduated cylinder filled with water, we see that the water level will rise. Why? Because the volume of the key is displacing the water. The amount that the volume rises on the graduated cylinder is equal to the volume of the key. Here are pictures of the cylinder before the key was added and after. Can you tell me the volume of the key? If you said 2 milliliters, you're correct. If we put the cube in the water, we see that the water level rises to 54 milliliters. So the volume of the cube is 4 milliliters. The dimensions of the dice are 1.6 by 1.6 by 1.6, which works out to be roughly 4 milliliters. This verifies that displacement is an accurate form of measuring volume. Did you know that the principle of displacement was first discovered in a bathtub? It was in 250 BC that the king of Syracuse asked Archimedes, a Greek mathematician, to determine whether his crown was made of pure gold. The king suspected that his goldsmith had mixed in a cheaper metal and kept some of the gold for himself. Archimedes was not allowed to melt down the crown or alter it in any way. So, one day, as he was getting into the bath, he noticed that the water level rose. He got so excited that it's said that he ran out into the streets, still naked, yelling Eureka. We'll discuss a little later why he was so happy. Now, let's look at buoyancy. Buoyancy is the upward force exerted by a fluid, either a liquid or a gas, on an object that it is in. Let's look at this piece of wood floating in the water. There is, of course, the force of gravity that is pulling the block down. This red arrow. But what is keeping it from sinking? The force is buoyant force. Upward force. As you know, a block of wood will float. That is because it's, the buoyant force is greater than the force of gravity. This is referred to as positive buoyancy. But what happens if the object sinks, like a steel ball? In this case, the force of gravity is greater than the force of buoyancy. There's gravity, and this is the force of buoyancy, which means it is experiencing negative buoyancy. Now, what can you say about an object that neither sinks nor floats? It's known as neutral buoyancy, but both forces on the object are equal. But what makes an object float? Why does a block of wood float, but the steel ball doesn't? Well, it has to do with the density of the object. Archimedes states that the buoyant force on an object is equal to the weight of the water it displaces. Since the volume of the displaced water and the object are the same, the density of the object is what determines whether it floats. If we look at a steel ship, we know that a the steel has a higher density compared to water. So how does it float? Well, if the whole boat was made of steel, it certainly would sink, but it's not. It contains a large amount of air in the hull of the ship, which makes the average density of the ship less than water. Earlier in the video, we talked about Archimedes and his bathtub. The king wanted to make sure that his crown was made of pure gold. Well, what Archimedes did was get a piece of gold with the same mass as the crown. He submerged both the crown and the gold in water, and found that the crown weighed less in water than the gold. Meaning, that it was experiencing a greater buoyant force. 
He also noticed that the crown displays more water than the gold block. Since we know that the volume of the displaced water is equal to the volume of the crown, we know that the crown had a greater volume. So we know the density of the crown was less dense than the gold. This meant that the king's goldsmith had in fact stolen some of his gold. Thanks for watching this video. Here's a question you can try. Why does a hot air balloon fly? To give you a hint, air is a fluid, and think of how thermal energy changes a gas.